Oh yeah! 
and he walks with me, yeah. and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own, and the joy we share as we tear, tear me there, none other yeah, shall ever, none other shall never. to 
majesty. Oh, yes. Your grace has found me just as I am. Captivated by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, we're singing majesty. We're singing majesty. Forever I am changed by your love, by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Oh yes, majesty. We're singing majesty. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. song. Some of y'all was tripping. See, saints, I I'm going to tell you the truth. If you grew up like in the black church, every now and again, when you go over to the white church, you learn songs that you didn't hear. The same, 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 same. Well, watch this here. You know, there, there, was a, um, there was a song you find it mostly in the contemporary worship. And it was like, you have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned oh, my sorrow into joy. And then saints, then white people used to get down. I was in I was in a church and the white people used to get down and that boy they was they was bucking the best way they knew how. Bob was going in. And when it got to that part, 
This is how we overcome. <laughs> Some Budweiser beer fell out his pocket. <laughs> Two cigarette lighters fell out of his pocket. When <laughs> this is how we overcome. And it says that thing was bopping it. This is how we overcome. 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 Let me see if I can find it. Don't worry, saints. In his presence is fullness of joy. You got to understand that the closer you get to the Father, the more joyful you become. Laughter is the medicine of heaven. Laughter is the medicine of heaven. And guess what? There are certain places that you really can't even go with God until you receive the grace of joy. Because saints... God does not just look at what you do. He looks at the attitude. What is the mentality that you have while you're doing it? Since you can have two children, you can tell one to pick up the bag and one say, okay. Huh. And the other one say, okay, dad, and pick up the bag. Which one has the favor? Which one has the favor? Why? And why is the favor there? Because of the joy. That's why Psalm 100 says, serve the Lord with gladness because joy matters to him. He looks at your attitude. And so saints, God, he wants you to protect your hunger in doing anything. Never do anything and let your hunger die because then your mentality die. If a man starts being a bus driver and when he first starts being a bus driver, he's so grateful for the job. So he's so he's so nice to everybody. He's like, hey, how you doing? How you doing today? And he's nice and he's decent. Uh, and he's operating in a place of great obedience and great uh, focus. What's going to go on here? Now, his character is more seen in his behavior. His character is more seen in his behavior. So now how he operates is more correct, is more excellent. Why? Because he has joy. But watch this. Over time, he's driving bus and he gets frustrated. He gets angry. He doesn't like the job no more. You know what he does? Sit down. I'm tired of y'all standing up in the back. Where my dog's at? What you really want from it? Let me know. Get, get back. Get, get. I, I need, I need y'all to stop jumping right here. I need What's going on here? Now, he forgot his hunger. Saints, I want you to catch what I'm saying here. When your hunger dies, you turn into something that is corrupt instead of Christ-like. Saints, I want you to catch this. Every time God gives you a position, you're operating as Christ in that position. But saints, there will come a time when that position will have crisis. You know what a crisis is? It's a mental warfare. It's a mentality that is offered to you to mess up your momentum, your excitement, your enthusiasm in that thing. And so here's what happens. The spirit... Of the Lord will not force you to stay in the Christ realm of your assignment. You can choose to yield to the crisis. And you could, you, you could choose to yield to corruption. And mess up the whole purpose of why God put you in that thing. And so even when God favors you and gives you mercy and gives you opportunity. You can choose whether darkness or light. To that same thing. Wow. Wow. People of God. This amazing right? This amazing right? You can choose either darkness or light to that same thing. Because saints. Ananias and Sapphira. 
was not supposed to die. But they chose the darkness of what they was created to do. Ananias and Sapphira had an anointing that was scheduled for them. They had a grace that they was walking into. They had a supernatural angelic ministry that was going to be granted to them. There was harvests that were scheduled for their life. But see, they chose the darkness of what they were assigned to do. Whenever the Lord picks you, you will have two offers. You can choose the darkness of what he has picked you to do, or you can choose the light. The only way that you could differentiate and stay in the safety is through hunger. The Bible says those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be what? Filled. And guess what? When you're filled, that means that Satan does not have any place. Remember, Satan can only have place if there's room. So if you are filled, it's impossible for any slots to be open. Have you ever went to a parking lot and you want to park your car? But you can't park your car because the parking lot is what we call filled or full. And so you have to look for a spot. You have to look for someone to leave in order for you to plug your car in. Guess what? That's the same thing Satan has to do. Satan has to wait until the parking space of your mind is open, is not full of the word, is not full of prayer, is not full of praise, is not full of thankfulness, submission, obedience, consistency, humility, is not full of willingness, is not full of joy. And then Satan parks in that parking space. And saints, the thing about it is that oftentimes you can lose your hunger and not even know it until Satan has parked more than one car in your mind. And now the parking lot is becoming full of illegal vehicles. So your motive changes. Why? Because vehicles represent drive. Cars represent drive. And so what's driving you is now a trespass against God. What's driving you? What's Because saints, did you know that depression is even motivation? Depression is motivation. Everybody depressed is motivated, but it, it matters who's motivating them. In order for you to be depressed, you have to be motivated to think hopelessly, helplessly. You have to think in the bracket of nothing good is going to happen. And so even motivation, suicide is encouragement. Before someone kills themselves, they were encouraged by the demon of death. That's why they have boldness to jump off of a bridge or put a gun to their head and pull the trigger. They're encouraged. Deep stuff, right? Deep stuff, right? Deep stuff, right? So even someone that commits suicide is encouraged. So that's why if you give them encouragement not to kill themselves, they'll still do it because there's another encouragement that has encouraged them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That, that's why when you try to encourage sad people and they still stay sad is because they have already been encouraged by the demons of sadness. See, if you sit underneath a God prophet, you, your mind will switch because God will talk to you. Your mind will switch. That's why if you try to give someone truth to set them free. That's why they can reject your truth and still act like they're free. Because there's another truth that they have chosen to believe. 
There's another truth that they have decided to know. A false truth. But it has made them feel like they are free. That's why they reject your truth. Which is not even just something that you created, but it is Christ Jesus himself. It's King Jesus himself. It is the person in the presence of God that has opened up your eyes to understand what is light, what is good, what is righteous. Now you understand why when you try to tell people the right direction and you say, I'm trying to give you righteousness. I'm already trying. I'm trying to give you righteousness. They already have their own righteousness. That's why your righteousness is not a fact. When King Jesus was teaching, what did he say? The traditions of men have made the word none effect. So what is the traditions of men? The traditions of men is this. They have already developed their own word of God. So when King Jesus comes with the word of God, they say, no, I'm not receiving that because I already know the word of God. I already have the word of God. And Jesus is trying to tell them. How are your hearts in this place? And here I am, your creator. And you think that you know. But here I am. I am the word. Wow. I'm the word made flesh. And you're choosing to remain in the flesh against the word. Hallelujah. Saints, King Jesus says something very profound. They was telling King Jesus that they were the children of Abraham. And he said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Why did King Jesus say Abraham saw? Because it was past tense. Then he said, my day. Because my day is a realm where you could see. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I be teaching some stuff on here, man. I think I only got three people that be understanding the depth of what I be saying on here. I think I got three people that understand the volcano, the volcanic eruption of what I'm saying here. Do you understand? He said, Abraham which is a prophet, saw, watch, my day. My day is a place that you enter in when your eyes open up. See, Saul was persecuting the church because he didn't ever step into my day. But when King Jesus knocks him down and he can't eat or drink and he's blind, he steps into my day. So watch, in my day, you know who voice dominates? Jesus. Hashakatai. Hashakatai. Hashatakai. Ratakashai. Rotoposo. Do you know who dominates in my day? The voice of Jesus. So watch this. He said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. Why? Because now Saul has stepped into my day. Now watch this, people of God. We often talk about Saul, but there was men besides Saul that heard the voice but couldn't see what was happening. They could not identify what was taking place. And saints, I want you to catch this. Jesus was present and did not try to win them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus only knocked down Saul, which became Paul, and only talked to Saul that became Paul. He never said one word to them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let, 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 me, let me show you something here. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Some of you all have been guilty of trying to grab people and say, hey, you know, Jesus just saved my life. He just spoke to me. So I'm going to drag you with me. No, 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 no. The mantle not on them. The encounter is a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You never see Saul's men ever get converted. You never see Saul's men stop persecuting the church. 
Because the encounter did not come to them that was around Saul. Oh my God. That's why God can touch your touch you and not touch your husband. That's why God can touch you and not touch your wife. That's why God can touch you and not your children. That's why God can touch you and not your cousin or your biological family. And he can watch. You could be sitting at your workplace and feel a strong anointing come on you. And people around you are still carnal. They're still disrespectful. They're still full of devils. Because saints, the encounter is one on one. So stop feeling bad when you're like, oh, I'm a glory carrier. How come the people in my workplace not changing? Because, baby, the change did not come to them. The change came to you. You are the recipient of something that is one of a kind. You are a recipient of something that is powerful. It is rare. It's unusual. It is glorious. It's the fire of God. It's the power of God. It's the spirit of God. Somebody shout. Glory. Hey, 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 hey. You wonder why, 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 why can I get around people they don't change? That's to show you how rare this is. King Jesus said two would be lying down in the bed. I'm sure one of them was Willie Earl. One, one would be taken away. One will be left behind. But two of them was in the bed. It says, two will be in the field. One will be taken away. One will be left behind. Both of them are in the field. So how is one being taken away? One being left behind. Both of them are next to each other. One is full of the presence of God. One is full of the prophetic anointing. One is full of glory. One got angels all around them. They, ah, they got angels all around them. And the person next to them is still surrounded by demons. The demons take them to hell. The angels take the one to heaven. Talk to me, saints. Hereby you understand the moderation of your mantle. The moderation, I've never spoke there before, but the moderation of your mantle. Because guess what? There's going to be some situations that you're going to have to really ask God for wisdom for. Because you have to become more protective about who you are. Because sometimes you give off so much of your oil that you yourself become depleted. And you don't even got enough strength to fight the devil because you don't gave it all trying to encourage others and fight their devils. Oh, Jesus. Saints, what if I told you that some of your backsliding was connected to the fact that you was trying to war in the spirit for other people and you left your wars undone. And when it was time for you to go fight, you didn't have no oil in your lamp for you to stand. But saints, that's changing right now by prophetic order because I come to set you straight. Protect the oil in your wine skin. Because even on that day, it said that there was five wise and five foolish. And the five wise had the oil in their lamp. And the five foolish didn't have no oil. And they said, let me borrow some of your oil. And the five wise said, no, you got to buy yours. You got to go make an exchange for yours. That's what I did for mine. I exchanged my rags for his riches. I exchanged my self-righteousness for true righteousness. I exchanged my own conduct for his holiness. I exchanged my foolishness for his wisdom. I exchanged my confusion for his peace. I exchanged my sins for his righteousness. I exchanged my darkness for his light. I exchanged my bondages for his freedom. The five wise, what, what do you catch about this? They was moving in the highest level of the prophetic, which is wisdom. The highest level of the prophetic, which is wisdom. So watch this here. The reason why they do not give them oil in their lamp is not because they don't have love in their heart. 
It's not because they're not kind. It's not because they're not loving. It's because they have wisdom. That's why the Bible said five wise virgins. See, wisdom shows you how to keep you. Hallelujah. 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 Wisdom shows you how to keep you. Wisdom shows you how to protect your all. How to keep it strong. Saints, the reason why King Jesus goes to a place and it said that he does that many miracles because of that doubt and unbelief. Do you understand what this is saying here? It's saying that King Jesus could not do much for them. Because they did not have The purity to just receive it and him still be full. He would have to give all his oil to them and leave himself depleted. Saints, I want to say something to you that's shocking him. And I've never said this before. If King Jesus would have done miracles, which he could have did, because he's God. He would have left himself damaged. Because remember what the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please God. And so if he's not getting no pleasure, that means that while he's pleasing you, he ends up in pain. Oh, Jesus. And how be, how be it that God tells you to leave people that, that seek to damage you? Why would King Jesus sit there and let people damage him and he give and give and they not give him nothing back in return? Saints, I want you to think about this from now on, that your faith actually protects God's heart from being hurt while he's sowing into you. It's your faith that actually gives God back a payment. It is your faith that tells the Lord, I'm not just going to steal. But I'm going to pleasure you back. Now, saints, no wonder Apostle James got the revelation that without faith is impossible to please him. Notice he said without faith. You notice he said without it said faith without works is dead. Apostle James. Now here's what I want you to catch. Why did he say faith? Without works is dead. Because when you have faith, it's going to lead you into what works to do that bring God pleasure. That's why when you have faith, God will tell you, you need to forgive somebody. Because it's not pleasing God that they are able to dominate your whole future. You dominated that somebody molested you. You dominated that somebody robbed from you. God is not getting pleasure when he telepathically tries to link up with you in love, but you're holding back because that bitterness is there. So he can't, he can't operate. He can't operate in what? Showing you, showing you the place of love. Why? Because spiritually now, what's going on here? Your mind is stuck in the gates of hell for unforgiveness. You see this? So while he's trying to take you into heaven, you can't go to heaven because you're in the gates of hell. What does Psalm 24 say? How could a man ascend into the hill of the Lord and stand in his holy place? He must have clean hands. That's dealing with works. 
Remember, faith leads you into the works that please God. That's why I say without faith is impossible to please God. Because faith without works, faith going to lead you into works that please God. So when it tells you in the text that faith without works is dead, it's telling you that God is going to work through that faith to show you the instructions that bring him pleasure. The activity, the behavior, the conduct, the choices. It says clean hands. Then it dealt, deals with the heart. What's going on here with the heart? Because the heart could either be in the gates of hell or in the gates of heaven. If your heart is in the gates of hell, how could you ascend into the hill of the Lord? Because that's the heavenly places. How could you stand in his holy place? That's the heavenly places. So what I'm showing you is that Satan has caused so many people for years and ages and centuries to stay in the gates of hell in their heart so that they cannot ascend. Now watch this. Here's the shocking thing. The hill and the holy place is where your lifestyle on earth is unlocked. That is in alignment with heaven. So hereby you understand how Satan has been able to stop people from being rich, being wealthy, being healthy, being blessed, being empowered, being anointed, being mentally at peace. Now, saints, I want to shock you like this. Oh, this is going to mess some of y'all up, but it's going to bless you. Guess what? When it comes to your crosses and the thorns in your flesh, guess what? There's actually mantles in the hill of the Lord that are to help you carry your cross and help you receive the grace that is sufficient and the power that's made known in your weakness. La pa pa ka pa pa pa. Ra pa 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 ka ra pa pa. Le bro pa 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 de pe pe pe. Ro pa pa si. In the hill of the Lord. There are garments that God gives you so that you can have the right attitude while you're going through a suffering that you shall. Now, I, I got to teach this because this is the word of God. That there is a suffering that you do go through that you will be rewarded for. The Bible says, if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. So there are sufferings, whether it be you have some type of bodily disease, bodily sickness, bodily um, deficiency, something going on, infirmity, or whether you have something going on as far as the season that you're in, the trials, or whether it be your level of finances, whether it be you may be being oppressed by the location where you live or the job that you have, some type of suffering. And the suffering is always going to be carrying what? A crown. And so guess what? You'll still have to ascend into the hill of the Lord because the hill of the Lord is going to give you the help you need so that you have the right perspective and that you can receive the crown of God without aborting it because you're mad. You can receive the crown of God without aborting it because you have the wrong spirit, the wrong reaction. You start criticizing God. Why won't you heal me? Why are you not doing this for me? And without... You doing that, you can step into the crowns of that suffering. Saints, I'm giving you some powerful stuff here. Because I'm telling you that God has mantles in heaven for you to endure certain things that are demonic on earth. That mantle is not just to deliver you from it as meaning get you away from it happening. But it's to give you the grace so that when it does happen, you can overcome. My God. My God, that's why King Jesus said, I have overcome the world. You shall overcome as well. So there's a there's a garment in heaven for you to overcome, not for you to get out. But so that when it happens, it doesn't take you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints, when Stephen was about to get stoned. He was operating in wisdom, right? 
The wisdom was not to escape the stoning. The wisdom was for him to keep the right spirit so that he could speak the right words while he was being stoned. I'm giving you something hot here. I'm giving you something hot here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Are, are you catching this? This is mighty what I'm telling you here. So, so I'm, I'm showing you something powerful here. That the mantle does not always come from heaven to stop the satanic activity. There are mantles that come from heaven so that while the satanic activity is going on, it does not affect you. It does not hinder you. It does not stop you. And it does not let you change your original speech unto God. The Bible said that Solomon, his speech pleased the Lord. He asked the Lord for wisdom. And the Bible said that his speech pleased the Lord. Why did his speech please the Lord? Because when you ask God for wisdom, you're saying, Lord, and understanding, wisdom and understanding, you're saying, Lord, even if something demonic is happening, give me the mentality and the abilities I need so that while it's happening, I don't become it to you. Oh, Jesus, because I could watch evil and then become the evil that I'm watching and become that to you. Because now I don't want to praise you. I'm becoming what I'm watching. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Saints, the angel Arrhenius just came to me, my angel, my personal angel, and just gave me a scroll. Let your la hosianda. Cha, 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 cha. And Arrhenius just said this to me. He said that when Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, he received the spirit that was in Lot, that, that was in Sodom, that was in Gomorrah. It entered Lot. While he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, the spirit and the principalities begin to dominate his behavior. Saints, look, the angel of the Lord comes and tells him, come on, let's go. And he cannot go. You know why? Because there's another angel talking to him. Irene is a bad boy. I'm telling you, he's a bad boy. Arrhenius, my God, and, and, and the thing about it, Arrhenius is a God angel. He a librarian angel, but he a God angel. So he knows stuff. He knows all that classified stuff. Arrhenius just whispered in my hair, ear and said, also say this, that the people in Sodom and Gomorrah was the sons of, of the sons of God. Oh, Jesus. Dad, this hot. Irenaeus just told me, hereby you will understand the mystery of Lucifer through Sodom and Gomorrah. Because men were operating as women and women were operating as men. Irenaeus just said, hereby you'll understand the mystery of who Lucifer is. Because the man wanted to operate in a female spirit to sleep with other men. And the woman were operating in men's spirit to sleep with other women. And so there was something called the, 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 the lesbian. There's something called the, ho the homosexual. What's going on here? The reason why this is happening because this is the mystery of Lucifer. Irene is a bad boy. You're a bad boy. And we bad boys for life. <laughs> Irene has just told me that the, the, as they was knocking on the door of Lot, they wanted to sleep with the angels because the angels were operating in what we call men. And guess what? They wanted to have sex with the men. Why? Because that was revealed to them by the sons of God. The sons of God revealed to them that in the sons of God region that men angels and men angels want to have sex with each other. It's strong stuff, man. It's strong stuff. But Prophet Joshua Holmes, we talk this. We talk it hot. It's God prophet stuff. Yeah, this fresh. 
And I ain't never teached this before. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Lebo soto corre de anto cote. Eredo se queche se de legi. And he said, that's what goes on in the angelic. The female angels, they won't sleep with the female angels. The male angels won't sleep with the male angels. So they influence man to do the same thing that they were doing. Remember, a satanic angel can only have you do what they do. I'm going to shock you. The reason why satanic angels get you to smoke weed, because that's what they do. Remember, God cursed the serpent to the belly. To eat the dust of the ground. The Lord said, understand that hell is a place where fire is being burnt. So, remember that a satanic angel can't get you to smoke weed unless that satanic angel smokes. So, so the reason why you smoke cigarettes is because there are satanic angels that smoke cigarettes. The reason why you drinking because there are satanic angels that get drunk. You say, well, prophet, how could they get drunk? Where was the drinking? Remember, God had wine in heaven before he pitted down here on earth. That's why even King Jesus said, I'm going to stop drinking until that day when I rejoin myself with my bride. I'm going to pit down the drinking because... There is wine in heaven. That's why King Jesus made a parable and talked about the new wine skin, the old wine skin. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God. Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Why do you think that they get you to get drunk? Because they used to drink in heaven. You said, well, prophet, well, where did they start smoking weed? They got cast down to earth. They was around grass. After all, who was given that tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Satan. That's why God said, don't touch it, because God had even gave Satan. God had gave Satan a tree. So you think it's ironic that Satan starts to reveal to you all the corrupt knowledges in that tree? All the corrupt knowledges are in that tree. So that's why you get introduced to things that God don't want you to do. Because that tree is carrying all type of things in it. Ideas, behaviors, addictions, habits, yokes, wrong relationships. Wrong geography, wrong placement, wrong mindset, wrong, uh, wrong uh, functionality. Saints, the truth of the matter is there's only two trees that would decide your eternity. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life. King Jesus said there's only a few that finds the truth, the, the path that leads to life. Because that's the truth of life. He says straight and narrow is the way. Why? Because straight and narrow, he said only a few that be that finds it. Why? Because the straight and narrow way, only a few people find it. But the majority of people, even people that you see with a Bible in their hand, even people that you see, some of you all grew up underneath religious mothers and fathers. They didn't know the Lord. They took you to church. They went to church. They read the Bible. They never said a cuss word. <laughs> Their 
righteousness. But do they know the Lord? Yeah, yeah, my mom and father, they knew the Lord. Well, how come you grew up fighting all these demons? How come you had demons until you were about 30, 40 years old and didn't even know? How come they wasn't even prophetic enough to tell you what demons you had? They didn't even know you because they didn't even know their self. They, don't know, they didn't know that they had demons. How they was going to tell you how to prepare you for life and they didn't even know how to be prepared. You was about to go the same path as them. I love the Lord. God, look before you. Depart from me. I never knew you. Bye. Some of y'all struggle with anxiety attacks because your mama struggled with anxiety. Some of you struggle with, 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 with lack of work ethic because your daddy was lazy. Your daddy was a vagabond. So, so you come you come on the scene. You wonder why, why, why every time I don't feel like working, I don't feel like doing it, I don't got no dreams, I ain't got no vision. Yeah, yeah, because that's where you came from according to the natural. You came from a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You came from a serpent that was after the fall. What you think will go happen with the next generation? If Jesus should, ch should tarry, think about it. Who is men going to marry? Women that's listening to the serpent. Women that are listening to music that call them savages. That's what the next generation is being raised up to. Women. That are Jezebelic. Men that don't fear God. The true and living God. Men that don't ask God for wisdom and understanding. That's the next generation. Men that don't fast. They don't pray. They don't seek the face of God. Men that don't even know prophetically what they are supposed to do. How are they going to lead a woman? How? Men that don't got no money because they're not really blessed. I'm talking about young men. They don't really got no money. Because guess what? They're not asking God for the knowledge that they need to function as men. But that's what the next generation really consists of. There's only really two trees. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's only two trees. Wow. So saints, when, when Adam chose the wrong tree, God put a cherubim to kick him out. To guard it. Why? Because that lifestyle was rejected by him. Do you know what's in the tree of life? Humility and the fear of the Lord. And, and Proverbs chapter 22 verse 4 says by Humility and the fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and life. If I could tell you life is really connection with King Jesus. That's what life is. Life is connection with God. A real relationship. A real fellowship. A real oneness. It's not religious. It's not form of godliness. That means that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That means that you're on the straight and narrow path. So when it says honor and hu fear of the Lord, humility and fear of the Lord, it's riches. That, that's God saying, I'll deal with your finances on earth. I'll give you everything that you do want in abundance. I'll give you everything that you need in abundance. I give you everything that you desire in abundance. Saints. Do it look like I'm affected by this world in America? Not even a little bit. Because <laughs> I've created my world and chose to walk in it. I will fight for the world. To get to know my God. But I've created my own world.
I'm living from the tree of life. Myself, I am a tree of life. That's why whoever listens to me, you come into this tree of life that I'm in, that I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the great God, Jehovah. Glory to the great God, Jehovah. Glory to the great God, Jehovah. Karapapa corre de mosata. Nemo rande beso corra ma papa karande kere de. Rande bosate de mondi akarata pa. Rapa paka rande corre mande kere mo. Glory to the great God Jehovah. Glory to the great God Jehovah. Oh, we thank God. Because let me tell you something. When you're operating in the tree of life, guess what? That's when you step into your virtue as a woman. When you're operating from the tree of life, that's where you flow. In the power and the presence of God. When you become a tree of life. That's where you start operating in peace and joy. That's when you start functioning. Guess what? You're functioning as what? You're functioning as somebody that's, that's in the spirit. That has righteousness as its hunger. You only want to do things God's way. That's your hunger. That's your appetite. Saints, do you know that one of the words for um, garden? Or the word, you know, garden of Eden. One of the words for Eden in the Hebrew is, guess what? Atmosphere. And guess what? Another word that, that could be related to the word Eden in the Hebrew is guess what? Delight and pleasure. So when the Bible says that there was a garden of Eden, it was a garden of atmosphere. So when Satan took over that serpent and came to attack that woman, Satan came to affect her atmosphere. Guess what? All Satan has to do to ever defeat you is affect your atmosphere. That's why you could talk that talk. Oh, I'm untouchable. The devil can't do me nothing. All Satan got to do is tell you that your dad has died. Your child has died. All Satan has to do. And now all that talk comes to... <sighs> Easy. Lazarus sisters, all Satan had to do was fight their atmosphere. Because their atmosphere was Lazarus. That's all Satan had to do. That's why you see people all the time. They say, oh, I love the Lord. They, they tell us, why, why my grandma had to go? Why my grandfather had to go? All Satan had to do was touch their atmosphere. How could God do this? Why are they talking like that? Because their atmosphere had been touched. That's all. That's all. The woman tells Job to curse God and die because her atmosphere is being affected. But that's her response. So that's what's really inside of her. As long as the atmosphere is good, blessed be the name of the Lord, which is false worship. So when the Bible said that the father seeketh those that have true worship, that means that no matter what atmosphere you in, you still create an atmosphere for me. No matter what atmosphere you are in, you still create an atmosphere for me. It doesn't matter what atmosphere you are in, you still create an atmosphere for me. Oh, no matter what. That's what a true worshiper is. A true worshiper Creates an atmosphere where there is none. God sees darkness, so he says, let there be light. Why is he doing that? He's creating an atmosphere. Why does he say, let there be light? Because light is the atmosphere that he's now creating. If you're going to be an imitator of God, like Ephesians 5, 1 tells you to be, 
You have to learn how to create atmospheres for the father to work in. You got to create atmospheres in your attitude, atmospheres in your gratitude, atmospheres in your speech. You create atmospheres when you sow seeds. You create atmospheres when you forgive people. You create atmospheres when you meditate on the word. You create atmospheres when you're praising God. One of the greatest ways to create an atmosphere is to praise God. Praising God and decreeing things and rejoicing before God, it does something to your soulish man where you stay in the atmosphere of submission. You stay in the atmosphere of worship. You stay in the atmosphere of grace. You stay in the atmosphere. When you're praising God and you're saying, thank you, Lord, I praise you, 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 Lord, I praise you for everything I have. I praise you for every experience. I praise you for all that you have done for me. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. I praise you for clothes. I praise you that I got eyes to see. I praise you I got ears to hear. Lord, thank you that you have given me spiritual abilities. Abilities to know who you are. Abilities to receive your word. Abilities to receive your correction. Abilities to yield to seasons and times and schedules that's in heaven. Thank you for giving me an excellent spirit. I praise you for dying on the cross. I praise you for rising again. I praise you for giving me resurrection power. I praise you for the Holy Ghost, your spirit. I praise you for your presence. I praise you for the angels around me. And I praise you for the angels that you're bringing to me right now. I thank you for all the angelic hosts that's coming into my life right now as I praise you. I praise you. See, see, you got to learn how to talk. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. I think that's Proverbs 15, if I'm not mistaken, 23, somewhere around there. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. You got to learn to talk in alignment with the tree of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you just catch what I just said? You have to learn to talk in alignment with the tree of life. You have learned how to talk from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You got knowledge that you got cancer, so you talk about cancer. You got knowledge that you got pain, so you talk about pain. You got knowledge that you got, you got uh, betrayed, so you talk about the betrayal. See, you have learned to talk about knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. You're operating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Learn to operate and talk from the tree of life. See, the tree of life got a different report. It got a different vocabulary and it gives you a different feeling, a different reality, a different results, a different answer, a different manifestation, a different demonstration, different angels, different kingdom, different glory, different power, different fire, different blessing. Different grace, different holiness, different righteousness, different power, different fire, different. Ho! Ho! Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Remember I told you, the tree of life is a lifestyle that God protected it from Adam because he chose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That word eat means to partake of. It means to become a recipient. That means that you volunteer to participate in. When he ate from that tree, that means that he is saying, I want this to be my decision making. I want this to be my choice making. I want this doctrine, this knowledge to be imparted to me. Which is really the beginning on the earth of the satanic prophetic. The prophetic of Satan. Satan. 
Saints, if you notice, you can hear Satan still talking today in 2021. We're in 2021, those of you who are in my ministry. We can still hear him talking to him because guess what? God said, don't eat from the tree. And look what Satan says, has God said. So Satan's whole ministry is to question the prophetic. Watch this here. The last spirit that Jesus talked about basically was Jezebel in Revelation 2. Why? Because Jezebel hated the prophets. All Satan said in Genesis was, has God said? So Satan is questioning the prophetic word. It's nothing different. It's nothing different. In the beginning, Satan questioned prophecy. And in the end, Satan questions prophecy. It's no different. It's no different. It's no different. Spiritually, that's the same spirit that we saw operating in the garden. So saints, you think about it. The wheat and the tail are growing together. There are people that are still operating underneath the knowledge of the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And guess what? That's the same thing that they're speaking, the same words that Satan said. It's nothing different. Look, look what it say right here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15. Look what it say. In verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. That says, what is a wholesome tongue? That's the tongue that God has you speak out of when you've been made whole. You can't speak out of this wholesome tongue until you've been made whole. Most of the stuff that you talk about is from brokenness. Most of the stuff you talk about is from what the devil has either introduced to you or has done to you. Oh man, I'm acting so silly. I'm silly, man. Look, look what people say. I'm dead. You going to declare that you dead? And you think that the people that's in a white jacket is the only people that need to be in a white jacket? You literally going to declare that you're you going to speak that over your life that you separated from God? You really going to speak it to the atmosphere? That after God has done what he has done. You gonna operate in a place and act like you saying that you dead means that you you laughing, you joy, you you joyful. You think that that makes you joyful? You just prophesied over your life that you separated from God. Saints, then people say I'm weak. Yeah, you are gonna be weak real soon, cause that's what you speaking. And it's crazy how this generation, the devil sneakily sends catchphrases to lock you up into speaking death. And see, when you're prophetic, you know how many women I have to rebuke, men I have to rebuke, and I have to tell them, do you know how stupid you sound? Some of you all, you, 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 that's why I even rebuke some of y'all. I, I rebuke some of y'all before. I know you're playing, but don't pit that on me. Don't, don't talk about I'm silly. Don't, don't play with me like that. Because I'll slap you. <laughs> I'll Rick James you. Don't play with me like that. Pick that on yourself. Don't, don't play with me like that. Now, I, I don't mind people. You know, people that just watch me, they might see me joke around and say, oh, you silly. They, they can do that, right? Because they don't know no better. They ain't trained. But those of you who know me, I'll... I, uh, 
I'll slap, I'll back slap you back to your mama. You gonna be like Nicodemus. Can I go back inside of your womb? I need to go back inside your womb and back slap. Because some of y'all be cursing your children. You call your children all type of foolishness. Calling them stupid stuff. Boo boo, bye bye, John John, ta ta, T T. That's why your child raise up stupid. Your child act like a fool because you put that on them. Calling them nickname. Call them something that means purpose. You curse your children when you call them all type of nonsense. I don't let nobody call my daughter nicknames. Zendaya, don't call her no Zen Zen. Don't call her no I'll slap you. You, 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 you ain't putting none of that stuff on my daughter life. I make sure my daughter be called full name. That's how I call her. Zendaya Glory Holmes. That's how I call her. Because the name, I heard it in the spirit realm while I was laying on a bed. I wasn't doing nothing. I probably had thought about something. But I was laying on a bed and I heard the name. All right? <laughs> but you would be shocked where I've gotten most of my revelations from. You'll, you'll be shocked where I've heard the word of the Lord come to me from. I should, like, that, that dog on it, what if I... Man, Jesus, you, you just... The spirit realm. People be calling their children all type of nicknames. Cursing their children. Why are you going to put down your child life? Let them grow into the right name. Name matter. Shoot, people be up there. Shoot, then you hear God talking to you. All right, Lord. This is... Listen, when you're a spiritual person, God talks to you all the time. You just got to catch it. You just got to start realizing how he's talking to you. But he'll talk to you in, e in, in, in every moment of your life. You'll be shocked when you'll have a conversation with God. If you're a married couple watching me, just make sure you drink water. Just make sure you drink water. You don't want you don't want no dehydration. You don't want no dehydration, all right? You don't want no dehydration. Just make sure you drink some water. Drink drink a lot of water. You can't you can't can't get so spiritual. You are now on one. What's the, what's your emergency? <laughs> Man, what's your message? What's your message? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. One time I had a funny story. Now this is a real story. This is no lie. And I, I was at a hotel... And um, in Georgia, and when I was there, there was this guy. There was this guy. He had moved in beside. And I, I I knew what he was doing prophetically, you know. And um, he had just got paid, so you know when he got paid, he he you know. So so there was some young girls came there, right? And um, now this is a true story. Like this is not even an exaggeration. This is a true story. This really happened for real, for real. And. We heard this noise. Boom! That man's spirit left his body, right? Saw his spirit leave his body. Man went to hell, right? But the girl that was in there, she didn't understand that his heart Understand that his heart was not. <laughs> I 
Blessed be God. And saints, when you go to hell, people will laugh at you. Them demons will be down there laughing at you. You hear people, <laughs> Drifting, you're up there drifting. What? Ah. You up there wondering why? Why you laughing at me? Look, look, he up there. Look, he fell asleep. She, you could handle it, could you? Ah, you could handle it. Ah. Hell will laugh at you. Got all them demons down there. That's all they get pleasure in your torment. They get pleasure in your humility, your 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 embarrassment. That's how they get. Look at this. Now, saints, it's very possible that you can have divine knowledge and just not use it correctly. It's very possible that you can know what you're supposed to speak and never speak it. And I want to show you here. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 2 says, The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. The tongue. So there's a tongue anointing for wisdom. And saints, that's why when you speak in tongues, that's why you're able to start speaking correctly in the natural as well. Because the law of tongues is to bring your mouth into the will of God, bring your life into the will of God, bring your words into the will of God, your behavior. Saints, why do you think on a horse they pit the bit in the horse's mouth? Why do you think that they pit a pacifier in a baby's mouth? Why is this all concerning the mouth? Because your mouth is really deciding the direction of your life, your behavior. Are you catching this? It's real powerful. Your mouth will be the deciding factor of where your mind goes, your body goes, your eternal soul goes. Wow. Wow. Saints, if you notice, you couldn't even sin against God until you spoke in the direction of that sin. If God tells you, I don't want you to... Go to this city. You would have to hear all type of words in the direction of that city for you to actually go. So even you got to that city not because you just wanted to. There was words actually drawing you there as well. Somebody could have said, are you still coming? Somebody could have said, you know, they got nice beaches here. You know, they got nice uh, vacation spots here. So, so there are words that drag you. Saints, why did the woman eat from the tree? Was it because the tree was actually in her sight or because there was words leading her to the tree? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joseph does not want to sleep with Potiphar's wife. I wouldn't want to sleep with her either. <laughs> You be a single man, you're like, nah, man, that's already being that that's already being dukes. That that ain't that ain't what we coming for. That ain't, that ain't nah, it's not. Nah, <laughs> nah. It's alright, Father, for going about your business. Chill, man, chill, chill, man, chill, man, chill, chill, bro, chill, man. Get over me, get over me, get get over me, get. Get get hey, get 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 over me, go. You got to get off of you. Chill. chill, man. Chill, man. I don't want it. I don't want it, man. I don't want it. Stop. But see, the thing about it was, you notice what happened. How did Joseph not even sleep with, with his master's wife? Because that was his master's wife. You don't touch master wife. Look what he said. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? 
Saints, let's just be literally speaking. What if Joseph actually did want to sleep with that woman for real? Because remember, he's a young man. He's strong. He's not getting no action at the time. And I know she looked good because remember, that's Potiphar and Potiphar, the main man. The main man always had pride in how that woman looked. You see what I'm saying? That's why when Abram knew his wife was fine, look what he said. Tell them that I, you my sister. Because Abraham already knew that the highest man, which is the king, was going to look for, for, for. So what if Joseph actually, Joseph actually felt attracted to Potiphar's wife? You see what I'm saying? But how did he shift himself out of the illegal place? His mouth. Says this powerful. He spoke in the direction that he knew God wanted him to go until he got there. See, some of you all, you say, well, how do I submit myself? You ain't even talking in the direction of submission. Of course, you're not going to submit yourself. How do I stay away from distractions? You're not speaking in the direction of not being distracted. So, of course, you're going to be distracted. Says, well, I, I'm, I'm teaching you something hot. The stuff that you keep on praying about, Lord, I don't want to do it. You're not even talking in the direction of not doing it. Lord, how do I stop having anxiety attacks? You're not even speaking in the direction of someone that don't get anxious. Of course you're going to have anxiety attacks. You are a slave to whatever you refuse to speak in the opposite direction of. What I just said is very powerful. You hear what I just said? You are a slave to whatever you refuse to speak in the opposite direction of. I want somebody to write that wisdom door down. You are a slave to whatever you refuse to speak in the opposite direction of. If you refuse to speak in the op opposite direction of a thing, you will do that same thing. If a man loves another man, guess what? And he keeps on Tonso and he looking at pictures Tonso. Ooh, this man fine. Ooh, he's so sexy. He's talking in the direction of that chain. So if he says, I, I want to be free from this, how he going to be free from something that he refuses to talk in the opposite direction of? Um, I don't never want to turn against my prophet. You will turn against your prophet unless you are speaking in the opposite direction of betrayal. Whatever you don't speak in the opposite direction of has authority to rule you. Saints, what do you think the woman should have said? In the garden, she should have said, out of all these trees we can enjoy, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we shall not touch it, for we shall surely die. She should have said what God said. Saints, what if I told you that your whole life is governed by words? You're only becoming the words that you have chosen to either speak or receive. You're only becoming the words that you have chosen to either speak out of your mouth or receive. Your whole life is just the becoming of words. You're only becoming a word. That's all you're becoming. You're either becoming a word that comes from God or you're becoming a word that comes from the enemy. Joseph used his words to speak against a door that was presented to him, which was to go 
and violate his master and sleep with his master's wife. He spoke against the door. The door did not just vanish. He spoke against it. How many of you, of you all ever said, I will never disrespect my prophet of God? How many of you all ever spoke that in the spirit? I don't want to hear you say it. But I, I'm, I'm saying this to arouse your thinking. How many of you all ever said, I will never try to trick my prophet? I will be honest with him. I will tell him what he needs to know. I will tell him what he needs to hear. And I will not hide things from my prophet. Some of you all never did that. So when you get with a prophet, you try to do all type of tricky stuff. And then the prophet got to come to you and rebuke you. And instead of you receive a crown, you got to receive a demotion. See, saints, you are not a generation that wants repentance, repentance, repentance. You are a generation that wants reward, reward, reward. So you're going to diligently seek God so that you don't got to keep on repenting. And rather than you keep on getting mercy, you get a mantle. I feel the glory of God going through my body as I'm talking to you. I feel the glory of God going through my being on here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. See, because the Lord, he, he, he want this to be spoken. He got to find somebody to talk it. He got to find someone to talk it. He got to find somebody to speak it into the atmosphere. He got to find somebody to let it be known. There's so many people, the reason why you can get in the presence of a man of God. You can hear a man of God and then you still do stuff that the man of God tell you not to do. It's because there's a mentality of you have not become violent in your faith about pleasing God. That's not your obsession yet. And that's very dangerous. You don't know if you're really going to make it to heaven until you get obsessed with pleasing God with your life. You can't even declare and say, you know, I know where I'm going to spend eternity. You know what? Because if you still got a side of you that's not obsessed with having accuracy with God, with making sure that you stick to what he's teaching you. You stick to what he's telling you. You stick to what he has introduced to you. If that has not become your obsession, there's still a percentage, a possibility that you may be in the flames. That you have talked about people, how could they go to? Saints, remember I told you that it's always good for you to lower yourself. Rather than exalt yourself. It's always good for instead of, instead of, I've met people say, I know, I know. But then you see them, they make the dumbest decisions. Well, if you knew so much, how come you, you make dumb decisions? Because you didn't know. God sent me to you for you to know. Saints, do you know some of the stuff that you're trying to fix right now? It's because you had an I already know spirit. The stuff that you're trying to get order in your life right now. It, these are things that God could have got it in order years ago. But it because you, you said I already know. Am I telling you this for you to feel bad? Or am I telling you this for you to be conscious of the spirit that comes and stops you from humbling yourself? Sometimes people, they try to make reason of why they do things. But the truth of the matter is, you don't do things just because of people. You do things because you're not humble. I've spoken to many people in ministry before. And what I have found out that sometimes the devil have told people that the reason why they are the way they are, whether they have an anxiety attacks, whether they're having nightmares, whether they're having 
uh, bad fortune in life or bad events, rather. Let me pick that better word. Bad events in life and bad situations is because somebody did something to them. But I've often told people when they thought that I was going to say, yeah, that person has, shouldn't have did you like that. I have told them, no, nobody has made you. You just became what you didn't know you was. And if anything, God let them just show you who you are so that you can make the changes before it's too late. Because there's people that go to hell and then they realize, hey, I was an enemy of God. I sung the song, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. But then they're in a cell in hell as an enemy of God. And they realize I'm an enemy of God. I hated God. I hated his restriction. I hated his instruction. I hated his prophet. I hated his word. I hated his wisdom. I hated his love for me. I hated his compassion. I hated his mercy. I hated his patience. I hated his forgiveness. I hated him. You know how many people go to hell and realize I hated God with a Bible in my hand. I hated God and I sat in a pew. I hated God and I gave tithes. I hated God and I prayed. I hated God. God will always let you give, give you a time to fix it before it's too late. Saints, let me just tell this to you. It's always good for you to humble yourself so that you can catch. Is God really even wanting me to feel that type of thing that I'm feeling, that type of attitude that I'm carrying? Or is God having me in a place right now where I can prove to him? The Bible says study to show yourself approved. That I can prove to him that I'm willing to learn what it means to be his friend. I'm willing to function as his friend. I'm willing to be his man, his woman, his beloved, his bride. The love of his life, his lover. Saints, do you know that the father loves you so much that he puts you in situations just so that you can prove that you're going to be his lover. You're not going to be his hater. You're not going to hurt him. You're not going to grieve him. But you're going to say, Lord, I'm here to birth your happiness. I'm here to do whatever you instruct me to do so that I can show you that I want to make you happy. I want to show you. Saints, the biggest thing that Satan has really done to religious people is put in their mind grace, 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 grace. So people are depriving God of what he wants and saying his grace got me. Imagine if I was to do that to you. You let me inside of your house. You let me enjoy all the heaven. You let me enjoy all the stuff. And you say, and I say, I ain't going to do nothing for you. I don't care who you is. I'm going to come in where I want, do what I want. I don't care who you is. It's according to grace, right? All right, so it's grace. So I'm going to do what I want. I want to bring my friend from jail. I want to bring my friend from jail. I'm going to bring them over. No, you can't stop me. I don't care if this belongs to you or not. Is according to grace. Yeah, I'm about to do what I want. Yeah, I don't care. It's grace. Grace got me. No, I'm not doing that. Because it's not by works. I'm not going to help you. It's by works. It's not by works, right? So I mean, I ain't doing nothing in hell. It's by grace. But that's what people do to God. So they won't praise him. They won't sow no seed. They won't disconnect from nobody. They won't sanctify themselves. They won't fast and pray. They won't read the word. They won't make right decisions. And they say, grace got me. That's what Satan has been trying to get people in the mindset of so that God could be tormented with how they treat him. Saints, if the Bible said grieve not the spirit, grief is torment. You ever been grieved before? Grief is a tormenting feeling. If you ever got grief, you'll feel this torment come over you. So you don't want to torment God with your life. 
You don't want to torment God with how you spend your time. Some of you are on here. You don't understand the reason why you somebody that every now and again you want attention, you want to be noticed. God is the one, he the originator of all of that. God be wanting attention from you and you just on your phone just doing your thing. But you say you love him. Is that love to you? How many of you all would like to get in a relationship and the person never takes time to acknowledge you? How would you feel? And then when they talk, they say, I, I, I love her so much. I love him so much. But they never take any time to acknowledge you. Never. Not once. How would you feel? But saints, that's, that's most of you all's relationship. You could be, you spend your time and, and your time is all occupied doing every single thing. But you never even make the necessary steps to say, Lord, I just want to praise you. I want to thank you so much. Only time you go to God in prayer is to pray for something. How about you just go and tell him, Lord, thank you so much for what you have done for me. Even when I wasn't listening to you, you was long suffering. I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me mercy. And see, the more you talk yourself in the direction, you're building loyalty. You're building righteousness. You're building the right spirit. The more you talk in the right direction. God needs you to hear, hear you talk in the right direction. That's just a prophetic apostolic anointing. That's apostolic correction. You got to understand sometimes... Uh, I switch in offices and that's just the spirit talking to you. It land where it's supposed to land, but I promise you, everybody needs to hear that. Don't let your hunger die off and don't casualize any moment that you've been given. Utilize every moment that you have on earth to the highest. And saints, I'm going to say this like this. Give God your best. You're not going to hear it coming from natural men because they want to talk about this grace, grace, grace stuff. Oh, it's according to grace. It's according to mercy. That's why people ain't giving God what he want. God can tell them, I want you to stop going over here. No, I ain't got to stop going over here. It's according to grace. I ain't got to do no works. God said, I want you to praise me more. No, I ain't got to do all that. It's just according to grace. That's how I'm saved. I'm saved. Saints, people don't understand. You saved by grace. Meaning that grace is an ability to do something. Did you catch that? Grace is God giving you the ability to perform. So if God gives you salvation, he's going to give you the ability of what that salvation requires. That's why I said work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What is it telling you? Start doing what the grace came to get you to do. People don't even understand what grace is. They think grace means that I don't do anything. The grace came for you to do a performance unto God. You say, oh, prophet, we're not supposed to perform unto God. You fool. The Bible even said that God performs miracles. I, I bet some of y'all never saw that, right? I bet some of y'all never saw that. If God is performing miracles... And you're wanting to be like God. You're not going to perform to. No wonder God is bored with you, baby. That's why God don't. That's why God not move. Saints, think about it. All the gifts and abilities that God has given to this body. This body of Prophet Joshua Holmes. Think about it. Why would the father give this body all these gifts? Because of the performance I give to him. The performance is actually activating more abilities. Saints, think about it. Why, why would there be a 
the story that one has five talents and starts giving to God and God gives him five more talents. Why is God giving him five more talents? Because God being merciful? Think about it. Is God giving the man five more talents because God is, is forgiving him for his sin? Or is God giving him five more talents because he performed with the five? So now God is saying, because you perform and I love the performance, I'm going to give you five more so that you can perform for me some more. Saints, think about this. That's the reason why people are not pleasing God, because they think that they're not supposed to perform. But do you understand that there is performance power that God gives to you so that you can entertain them? Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, it says that you may entertain your angels unaware. Okay, so that you, so you think God gave you power to entertain angels, but not entertain him. He greater than the angels. You see how far gone Satan tries to get you from being the person that you're supposed to be? And Satan has been robbing worship from God for ages. And people won't give God what he's looking for from them because Satan will say, no, you ain't got to do that. It's just grace. Saints, what if God tells you to sow a thousand dollar seed? And then you don't sow the seed. And you say, oh, I know he loves me. He loves me with all his heart. I know he loves me. We not dealing with God's love. His love going to be there whether or not you do what he say or not. But guess what? You're telling God that you don't love him. To do what he say. So how is he. Say say I'm not going to do that. And then you say I'm going to go down to the homeless. And give them canned goods. I'm going to go feed the homeless. Think about it. That's the same thing the Pharisees did. They wouldn't do what Jesus was saying. But they found their own righteousness. They found. How could I replace the instruction. How could I do something. That does not make me die to myself. But it causes me to still be in control. And I can still feel like I'm holy. And I'm righteous. And I love God. But I refuse to give him what he actually instructed me to. Saints I remember when I was playing football. I was running a 4. I had to be running a 4-1. 4-2, 4-1. I was real fast and I was watching people like Reggie Bush and I, um, I started using what they was using too. I was running with a parachute. So I would work out and stuff like that. I started working out my body very early. So watch this here. Um, and I, I used to do sit-ups. Like I used to do those jail sit-ups. <laughs> so watch this here. So. I remember I had a visitation from Jesus when I was 14 and Jesus came in my room. I was on a dry fast. I wasn't eating or drinking nothing. And Jesus came in my room and when he came in my room, boom, I hit the floor. And I know it was him because I saw his, his, his feet. And Jesus said to me, he said, I did not create you to play football or basketball. And he told me some other things. But he didn't tell me to go tell the coach that I wasn't playing no more. But because I'm not stupid, I went go do it. Other people wouldn't do it, even though they saw Jesus. Saints, do you understand that Jesus' presence does not make you wise? I've met many stupid people. The presence of Jesus does not make you a genius. It just gives you an opportunity to pursue the genius. It just gives you the opportunity to pursue the wisdom. That's why if you get around Jesus, you can still be a Judas. Because the presence of Jesus. Jesus was around people and he was carrying glory. And the Pharisees still looked at him and disrespected him. While he's carrying the glory. While he's carrying the manifest presence of God. They still disrespected him. Jesus is on a cross and they're laughing at Jesus. Powerful God. The creator of the universe is on a cross and they're laughing and scorning him. <laughs> Look at <him. laughs> ah. 
The presence of Jesus does not make you wise. It gives you a chance to be wise. So saints, Jesus didn't tell me to go quit playing sports. He just told me I didn't create you for that. Over the years, as I, as, I, as I was going further in ministry, the Lord told me, he said, son, I am you and you are me. I didn't want to go play football. I didn't want to go play baseball. I didn't want to go play basketball. So now, you are what I wanted to do. I made your body for me to live inside of it, for me to live as it, for me to do what I wanted to do. I wanted to live my life through that body. Now watch this here. Do you know when I went to go tell my coach that my coach called me stupid? Coach said, you stupid. You got these scouts about to come here. Why would you do that? The coach told me, you a fool. You going to use all this speed? You got all this speed? People trying to get that fast and you won't use it? it? Was just talking his talk. I ain't disrespect him. I just said. And I left the team. Saints, do you know how many people came up to me and said, hey, you can still play football and, and reach the people that's playing football. You can still play basketball and just minister to the people and win their souls. Who were those people? Devils. Satan always offer you in the region that doesn't look like it's dangerous. Why would I do something if God said not to do it? It's nothing that I can do for God in the place that he didn't send me. And that's why a lot of people are on their way to hell. Because the Lord tells them what he wants and they say, well, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it for somebody else. Oh, oh, okay, the Lord showed me this, but I'm, I'm going to use what he showed me. I'm going to use it for somebody else. I'm going to use it for somewhere else. I'm going to use it for somewhere else. And God said, oh, oh. And God has to deal with the heartache and the pain of watching what he meant never happen. Saints, when you realize what God goes through, it'll make you better. When you realize what God goes through, you'll stop complaining about what happening to you. And you'll get your eyes off of yourself and you'll put your eyes on King Jesus. When you really start realizing and telepathically understanding the creator of the universe. Now, saints, watch this here. Do you know what's happening also in our land? Because I was taken into a vision and I saw some prayers. I'm not even here no more. I'm not even in my body no more. You can see me right here, but I'm not really here. I saw some prayers being offered up by the angels. And some of the prayers was cursing God and telling him, how come you lied to us? Why aren't you doing anything? How could you let this happen to us? Why have you brought us here just to die? I'm seeing it right now. These are what people are resorting to. Their prayers are not disrespect unto God. And the father just told me the reason why I'm letting you see this because I want you to tell my people that I go through enough betrayal as is. I'm seeking a people that really are of me. And nothing will ever change that. I'm seeking a people that all they desire is to make me happy because I already have the power to make you happy. I don't have to learn how to do that. You came from me. So I'm looking, I'm seeking for those that will worship me in spirit and in truth.
See, the father said, I'm looking for people that I don't have to beg them to be on my side. It is their delight. Remember, one of the words for Eden is delight and pleasure. So saints, God put them in a garden of delight and pleasure. So guess what? Why were they in the garden? To delight their self in the Lord. And he was going to give them the desires of their heart, which was pleasure. Saints, it was more than Adam just saw a seed. Adam was doing something that God had delight in. And as he was doing what God delighted in, God was going to give him pleasure. Saints, imagine the Lord was talking to me about this early this morning. He said, son, when I wanted to give Adam something that was going to bring him pleasure and happiness and joy, I thought of a woman. There are women in the earth that don't even know their purpose. They're living for Satan. They're giving their life, their time, their body, their plans, their careers over to the devil, over to demons. And, and the Lord told me I created woman to carry my pleasure power. Imagine a woman that argues. Imagine a woman that slanders, that gossips, that criticizes. Imagine that type of woman. That woman does not know who she is. Imagine a woman that's distracted, that is scattered in her thoughts. She does not know who she is. Imagine a woman that's constantly telling God to forgive her every minute. She does not know who she is. Lord told me, son, I didn't give Adam a bird. I didn't give him a turtle. I didn't give him a cheetah. I didn't give him a zebra, an eagle, a dove. I didn't give him a crocodile. I didn't give him a butterfly, an eagle, an a, a ant. I didn't give him none of those things. I didn't give him a coyote, a cow, a bear. I didn't give him a lion. When I wanted to show Adam what it meant to experience heaven in his life, in his body, in his soul, in his spirit, in his heart. When I wanted to show him what it meant to have an atmosphere of my presence manifested in flesh. He said, I thought of a woman. But here's what the father said. I not only did that for Adam, I did that for myself before Adam even came on the scene. So I knew that it worked. I knew that that concept worked. So imagine when you're a woman and you're struggling with all type of stuff. You're outside of your DNA. You don't even know who you are. When you're a woman and you're begging God to take stuff away from you, you are far from your origin. Return and rest. In who you were made to be. You are God's pleasure. When he look at you. He wants to experience. A realm of pleasure that he gave you. Me and you both know that you can't move in pleasure. If you're not in faith. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. So here's how do I stay in the pleasure. You keep on letting his word come to you. You put yourself in position to hear from him. You put your position, self in position to learn from the prophet he sends to you. You put yourself in position to keep on receiving his information. Because faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word. You can't please him until you're in faith. So when you see things bothering your faith, that's a sign, depart from it. When you see things suffocating your faith, that means stop thinking it. Cast that thought down and replace it with the right words. Saints, this whole life is governed by words. 
The secret that the father is saying is that the whole earth is governed by words and you will spend eternity in the words that you have chosen to receive, entertain and do. What did James say? Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer, deceiving yourselves. King Jesus said, by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. So since your eternal life, your eternal placement, where you're going to spend eternity is based upon words. If you speak the words of the devil, you will end up where the devil is. If you speak the words of death, you'll end up separated from God for all eternity because that's what death is, separation from God. If your words separate you from God, so will your eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is powerful stuff here. This is powerful stuff here. How many of y'all catching this? This is powerful stuff. And then I gave you a law on here. Always remember this. To start using your words to speak in the opposite direction of what is adversarial. If you don't want to be struggling with um, lack of loyalty, speak in the direction of loyalty. If you don't want to be struggling with sickness, speak in the direction of wholeness. Well, what if nothing happens? You can't please God. If that's your question, that's proof that you're choosing not to please God. Because without faith, it's impossible. You just said that I choose to move in that impossibility. That's what people do all the time. Well, what if nothing happens? Well, how long is it going to take? It's saints. The truth of the matter is, guess what? When you realize that you're here for God, God makes your life as if he's here for you. That's why he gives you what you want. Because you have given him what, you, what he wanted and you made your life like I'm here for you. So now he starts giving you like he's here for you. Let's go to Romans 8. I see that boiling in my spirit. Oh my gosh. How many of y'all catching this? Isn't this amazing? You imagine God pitched you over in Hawaii. And he says, I want you over in Hawaii. And somebody says something to you. Say, I don't like you. You are a liar. And you say, fine, I'm out of here. I'm not, I'm not being in Hawaii. You take a flight. You drive all the way. You take a flight all the way back to Detroit. You know how stupid you is. And then, you know what the devil tell you? God going to make a way for me in Detroit. God about to bless me in Detroit. My best days are ahead of me. You up there go join a church in Detroit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You up there praise dancing in the church. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You up there praying at the altar trying to deliver people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Saints, you know how many people do that? Crazy. God is not going to let you into heaven if you don't obey his instruction. He's not going to make another instruction for you. Saints, look at Jonah. Jonah think that time is going to change God's mind. Oh, I don't feel like going, so I'm just ain't going to go. 
I know God going to give me another instruction later on. God said, that's how you feel? All right, I'm just going to fight you until you realize. Or else I could just send you to hell. Which one you want? Huh? You want to go to Nineveh? Or I could just ship you to hell? Because saints, he was right next to the portal. When God put him in that water, God put him right next to the portal. Saints, there was more to that story than you know. Jonah was a seer, so he knew about these seer stuff. God put him right next to the portal and said, what you want to do? I can spit you out and just send you, or what? What you want to do? Pick. Decide where you want to go. Either you want to obey my instruction, or we ain't playing that. Well, I just picked you where, you, where, where everybody that don't obey my instruction go. Just simple like that. Sometimes, sometimes you don't really see how the devil, the devil, the devil don't like you. So you think that everything that happens to you in your assignment is from God? Oh, God is speaking to me and leave Hawaii. You dummy. You think that God sent you to Hawaii and the devil ain't going to fight you in Hawaii? You really going to take a risk. And act like only angels talk to you in Hawaii. That's all that's talked to me in Hawaii. Oh, the angels telling me to leave Hawaii. Yeah, the angels telling you to leave, but they satanic angels. They fallen angels. And they left their position too. And they wish that they could return. They wish that they could have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Their name got erased. They wish they could be part of the angelic forces. They wish that they could be a friend of God. Yet an angel told you, fallen angel. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, let my Oh, rama, mama, mama, mama. Don't miss God. Humble yourself. Humility is always the way. And since you can't humble yourself around people. Because when you get around people, you try to hide. See, see, when people, when people running from God, they try to hide. They try to get beside people. Oh, that, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That ain't going to help you. Because that's what Jonah did. When Jonah was running from God, all he did was get around a whole bunch of people. And God let all the people throw him over. That's what people like to do, like to camouflage. Okay, you can't see me. All right, oh, you can't see me. Yeah, I got all type of reasons. No, 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 baby. Baby, God, he revealed to David, if I make my bed in hell, you'll still find me. This whole earth is saturated with an omnipresent God. Where could you go? Hey. That, that, that's what you got to catch. That's why when you're in the wrong, when you're in the wrong location, you connect with all type of people because you're trying to hide. You're trying to camouflage yourself like it's all good. No, no, no. When God got his hand on your life, he's going to chase you down. And saints, the scary thing about God is that he don't get tired. So it might be two years. You might think that everything coping steady and God pop back up. I'm coming to fight you again. <laughs> I'm coming to... No, this, this, this is God. This how he do. He'll sneak attack you. Make you think everything coping steady and then pop back up. That's how he does. The truth of the matter is, why do we even have something called the fear of God? Because don't play with him. He ain't supposed to be played with. Just follow his instructions. Just do what he tell you, tell I is.
It's always good to go low because you ain't got to worry about no, no, no satanic deception taking you. It's always good to go low. The minute you go high, sometimes you can't see that your high may be the prince of the power of the air. Your high might be a principality in power. And you don't know, but as long as you go low, you can see clearly now. Why did you think that God even created a posture to get on your knees? Huh? Why do you think God created this posture to get on your knees? Why? Why? Why did he tell you to get on your knees? Because when you're on your knees, you actually can see the ceiling. You can see the room better. When you stand up top, you might not see certain things. But when you get on your knees, even, even everything becomes clear. Hezekiah, as long as he was standing up like this, he couldn't see that God was angry at him. When he get on his knees, then he realized, oh, shoot, how, what was I doing? I done stop praying. I done stop seeking God. I done stop worshiping. I don't even seek the face of God no more. I'm not humble. I'm hard-hearted. I'm rebellious. I'm wicked. I'm evil. I'm not there talking about I love the Lord. I'm something wrong with me. How am I acting like I'm good and I'm not? I got all these thoughts inside of my mind. Saying sometimes you 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 gotta get to the point in your life where you realize that you're wicked. You gotta get to a point in your life where you realize that you're wicked. If you're going to change. Some people have been wicked all their life and thought that it was good just because they went to church, because they read their Bible, because they say God, God. That, that don't mean you're good. The most wickedest people listen to worship music. That's all they listen to. They don't listen to Lil John, yeah. They don't listen to the burner, the burner, usher, let it burn. They don't listen to it. The most wickedest people got on Hillsong and worship music. That's how they vibe. You want to meet a murderer? Listen to their sound, soundtrack. You see how much worship music they listen to. That's all they listen to, worship music. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Lord. And they'll still kill you. They'll still kill you. You forgot that Saul was trying to kill David. But what is David doing? Playing worship music. You ain't hearing me. You're not hearing me. I say, you ain't hearing me. Saints, Lucifer was singing worship unto God, but Lucifer still leads 33% of innumerable angels into cursing God. That's what proceeded out of Lucifer's worship. And that's why religious people, they listen to worship music. They do all type of religious stuff and they can't even live at peace with you. That's Lucifer children. They can't even obey God with what he has told them to do. But they listen to worship music. That's Lucifer children. Since this is a prophet talking to your prophet. The prophet office heavy. We wrong. The prophet office is wrong. So that's when this prophet talking to you. This prophet, my, my spirit don't have a beginning and it don't got no end. It's the eternal spirit. Was here before you ever know. Why do you think I talk about all these things? I talk about all these things because I know I was there. Why do you think that I know the mystery about Lucifer? Because I saw Lucifer. This body is just a young body. This body is not who I am. I'm just taking over this body because I need to be in this generation. Reincarnation has been God's idea from the beginning.
God always put our spirit back into another body. Because we are God's ourselves. I ask you a question. Uh, let me ask you a question. Whose spirit do you think is more powerful, Elijah or Elisha? Whose spirit do you think is more powerful, Elijah or Elisha? Le ma rompon de re vesti karan de rivasa. Rande de voste pere de visond. Rande kete stolo bustaya. Ran tan 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 pando robo corrende de vis. Rete te bustata karata. Rande vestondo lovosa. Rete te pe karata. Lebe keste karande de vosa. Some of y'all are scared to answer because you're proud. Lebe kusta karande de vosa. You're proud. You got pride inside of your heart. That's why you can't answer the question. You got pride inside of your heart. You can't answer a question because you think if I answer it and I'm wrong, I don't want to look like I'm wrong because you're proud. You're a proud person. You're proud. I'm talking to you. You hear, you hear me, Spirit. You're a proud person. Get that pride out of you. Stop always trying to be right and wrong. Da, 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 da. Just submit. You're proud. Oh, I don't want to answer. I, I, I can read some of y'all mind. You don't know that you're in the presence of a prophet. I can read some of you all mind. But see, I'm good that I'm using this for this because this is like my whole life. Like, I can read people's mind and they don't know I can read their mind. I already know what you're going to do. I already know what you're going to say. I already know what you're thinking. I already can read your mind. So just be honest. You see what I'm saying? You, you don't know the countless amount of people that I've gone to before and I said dust and dust and dust and dust. How do you know? I watched Nutty Professor and Nutty Professor, he went through the screen while he was eating M&M's and said, I want to tell you a secret. And he prophesied to me and I found out. That's how I Some of y'all proud. I ask you a question, you don't want to answer a question because you think if I say something, I don't want to be wrong. You wrong if you don't answer the question. You're not wrong if you get the question wrong. See, that's, that's, that's. You wrong if you don't answer the question. I ask you a question, you don't say nothing, a demon got your mouth. If I ask you a question and you can't answer the question because of your own ideology, it's because a demon got you. If a prophet asks you a question, it's to let you know where you stand. Leave your pride to the side. That's our problem. That's our problem. That's why you don't really go far in the spirit because you're too worried about how you look. See, I didn't get to where I am because I was worried about how I look. That's why some people attack me for how I look. That's why you see that even I've been attacked before. People said, you, you, know, you, you know, one of the funniest things that I've heard in my ministry, they said he can't be a prophet because I've never seen a prophet look like that. Thank you. Thank you. Because... If you can't discern Samuel, if you can't discern Elijah, that means that they're not really Elijah. If you can look at Moses and think that he Aaron and think that he Joshua and think that he Caleb, that means that that's not really Moses. Saints, when God put a prophet and a king in your life, we're going to stretch you until you be the royalty that you're supposed to become. And saints, the thing about it is that a lot of times you think that people love you and care so much about you, but they have never taken you into the glory realm of what you could be, who you could be, how you could talk, how you could look, how you could act. The real love of God is the love of God that works in the prophet to take you to your highest. When Elijah said, I'm going to Jericho, I'm going here, I'm going here. Do you know that Elijah was walking? He was, he had to, um, 
If he rode a donkey or a camel, he had to give them water. That was like taking them to the gas station. So imagine you, when you driving a camel and you driving a, a whatever you driving, whether it be a horse, whether it be a um, uh, a horse, whether it be um, a donkey, you have to take it to the pond to get water. So it's like you got to take a gas station break. I'm going to ask you this question again. Who do you think has the greatest spirit, Elijah or Elisha? And I want you to think. I want you to think in a sense of deepness now. I want you to think in a sense of deepness. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to think in the. I want you to think in the depth of deepness. I, I want to see. I want you to think about it, huh? I want you to think about it. Who, who, who has the greater spirit? Think strong. Think strong, huh? I want. I want to see it. I want to see you. I want to see you. Who, who, who you saying? Who, who y'all saying? Elijah, or Elijah. Daughter, I get what you're saying, but pick one. Pick one. I, and and, and, and I, 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 want, I, want, I want some of y'all answer. Come on. Come on. Who got the greater spirit? Elijah or Elijah? Huh? Who y'all picking? Huh? I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. Some of y'all cat got your tongue. Some of y'all cat got your tongue. I'm listening. I'm listening. Who 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 was it? Who was it? Some of y'all got to get free from demons and hold you back. Come on. Who 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 you pick? Who you pick? Who you pick? Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, talk, talk, talk. Talk to me so I can give you the answer. Come on. Talk to me so I can give you the answer. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, talk to me. Y'all done pictured, y'all done casted your vote, so it's good. You done cast your vote. Young know, cash vote, which is good. Huh? You don't know, cash your vote, so it's good. Huh? Karapa, karama, karama, de kerramo. Rande vesor, rande de vasa. Rata pa correte te me seco rande de hosa. Rande de sondo corrande de vara. Rata pa corrande de hosa. Rete te que rete te po corranda. Jevros te que rende de hosa. Lepo corrande de vasa. Rande de besi. Now I'm about to talk to you. I'm about to talk to you. Y'all all got your answers in? I'm about to talk to you. How many y'all ready for it? Huh? How many y'all ready for it? Huh? How many y'all ready for it?
John 13, 16, look what it says here. John 13, 16 says this. Look what it says. It says, Verily I tell you the truth, that no servant is greater than his master. Why well, I ask y'all that question because the father asked me that question around the early morning. The father had asked me that question around the early morning. The greatest spirit is Elijah. But that was the Lord's response to me. He took me to this uh, text and he said, the servant is not greater than his master, nor he who is sent greater than who he who sent him. Did you catch that part? It says, nor he who is sent is greater than he that sent him. So Elijah has sent Elisha. To anoint him in his place. He sent him. So Elijah was greater. Which is kind of like a parable. It's, it's not like it's so easily to understand. But that's why the father had asked me. Because it's a deep question. It's a deep question. The father had asked me because it's a deep question. The reason why the father had asked me that because it's something that is is mysterious. The truth of the matter is God is constantly talking to you about deep stuff and that's why if you're not receiving that then Satan could take you into stuff that you're not supposed to go into. God is always conversing with your mind about things that's going to keep you inspired, excited, and searching. He wants your curiosity. He wants, okay, what happened in the garden? The serpent switches the curiosity of the woman from God to a tree. You see, that's what been happening. Look. Satan switch our curiosity. From God to a truth. God and a truth. Now, she goes from the God realm, curiosity, and now she's curious about a truth, secret. You imagine all you have to encounter is curiosity in the wrong direction. Your curiosity in the wrong direction will birth all types. Of weaknesses. Your curiosity got to stay in the right direction. So if you think about it. Your job is to keep your curiosity in the spirit. If you don't keep your curiosity in the spirit. Your curiosity for the flesh will come. How do you protect yourself from the curiosity of the flesh? The curiosity of the spirit. That's why he said, if you seek, you will find. But who is really seeking? 
How many people do you know that actually is seeking in the direction of God? Most people are seeking in the direction of what is the wrong curiosity. What is what you're seeking? How is it setting you free? How is it delivering you? Whatever you're seeking, how is it making you more powerful in the spirit? How? Or is it what you're seeking actually reacquainting you with flesh? You got to start even realizing prophetically what is the outcome of what I'm seeking? What is the outcome of what I'm seeking? Does it make me more Christ-like? Or is it making me more lost? What is the outcome of what I'm seeking? Now, let's go to... Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse... 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Look what it says right here in verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Saints, I want you to catch this. The Lord spared his son, but some of y'all not even willing to spare yours. You're not willing to spare your children. You're not really willing to spare stuff that is your treasure. Money. Possessions. Plans. See, you're not going to go very far with the Lord until you surrender everything to him. Everything. I'm talking about every single thing. I'm talking about who you with, who around you, your house. Your apartment, your vehicle, your path. Look, he spared not his own son. That means that his son is the greatest thing that he has. That means that his son is his greatest possession. His son. Look, his son is the greatest level of who he is. And he sows his son for you. What is more important to you than giving it to King Jesus? What's more important to you? Because he gave his best. So saints, this is the same mentality you got to take on. What is clothes, cars, houses, money to you or people when it comes to you in the Lord? Because this, he spared not his own son. So the father gave his best seed. Until you get to that place of giving your best seed, your best treasure, your best possessions, now look at this. He spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Saints, look at this here. He gave his best seed to unlock every other thing. Saints, how much more are you? That's what the Father do for you too. He give you the opportunity to give your best seed to unlock all other things. Look, he spared not his own son, delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? See, the seed carries with. It says with him he'll give you all things. But who is him? Jesus. And who is Jesus? A seed. So his seed was carrying other departments. With. Mean a company of things. Every time you sow a seed, there's a company of other things that comes along with that seed. You're not just sowing a seed. 
you actually unlocking a whole kingdom of other stuff that will surround that seed. Your seed is not solo. Did you just catch what I just said? Your seed is not solo. It has a company and a family of other things that's coming alongside of it. You got a family of harvests that comes alongside of one seed. So imagine if you become a sower. How many other things are you bringing into your environment, into your, your, your placement, into your assignment? How much more? And, and then people wonder why. How do some people have more things than other people? Because we sow. You think I prayed for the clothes that I have? Huh? You think I prayed to God? Lord, give me a lot of clothes. Please, I pray. I pray that the clothes are sharp. Oh! Dig all these clothes. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. How did this happen? Oh my gosh, it's just a miracle. Wow, this is a miracle sign and wonder. Clothes just showed up. Oh my gosh, Becky. This is wild. Wow, oh my gosh, I need to call CNN News because this is fake news. I need to call CNN to find out fake news. Give them more fake news. No. I got the clothes from the sea. Sewing. I sold the clothes so they came back to me in abundance. Now saints, what is clothes a product of? Money. So even if I sow money, money is carrying a company of things, everything that money produces. See, you can sow a seed and get a car because where does cars even get made from? Money. You say no profit. They use materials. How did they get the materials? Money. That's why the seed could bring you into a house. Why? Because money creates houses. Well, no. They use actually timber and all of stuff. How did they afford the timber? Money. All that stuff is produced by what? Money. So when you sow and seed, guess what's taking place? What's taking place is what? You're receiving the product of what money produces. Things. Saints, what did it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other angels will be added unto you? No. Why did it say all other things? Because saints, when you seek the kingdom, it's going to lead you into seed sowing. And when you're sowing seed, all other things is a product of what seed is, which what money is. These things are products of what money produce. A house, a car, clothes. Saints, some men be buying their woman. You look at some men, you see how some men look like a, 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 a squirrel. How many men you see look like a squirrel and they got, they got a nice looking woman with them? But that's a scared thing. If she could be bought by a squirrel, she could be bought by what? A stallion. <laughs> Let me get back here. Let me get back. <laughs> uh, Marcus. <laughs> Marcus. Marcus. Marcus the stallion. <laughs> big old, big old Adam's apple. Big old, big old Adam's apple. Big old, big old Adam's apple. That's what it really, what it really meant to say. I'm tell you that right now. That's the deception going on. We're gonna tell Marcus to work for CNN. <laughs> big old, big old Adam's apple. Big old, big old Adam's apple. Big old, big old Adam's apple. And then, then, then when you meet those people up there telling some that wop. Yeah, oh, we don't want to hear it, man. Both of them legs look like they don't take no shower. 
You don't want to hear it, man. Please. Yes. Up there. Y'all ought to thank them because they, 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 they. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, funky woman is funky woman. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Saints, I want you to catch this. God is in the mindset of giving you all things freely. So saints, when you sow and seed, you just, you're activating a whole world of things that God wanted you to enjoy anyway. When you sow a seed, you tell telling God, I don't want to live out of this world no longer. This world that's slow. This world that God type of uh, delays. I want to live out of this world. This world where everything you want freely give me. Now saints, you got to catch what it means. The word freely give is actually a word that signifies that God is saying that this is what I wanted to do before you did anything for me anyway. You got to get the description of the word freely give you. Because he's saying before you even loved me, before you honored me, before you obeyed me, I already had in my heart that I wanted to give you this. But see the fact that you're doing the act of honor, the act of sowing, now you're telling me that you're ready for me to do it. That you won't mishandle it. You see what I'm saying? See, the fact that it said that he'll freely give you all things, everything that God is going to give you, he already wanted to give it to you with no strings attached. Meaning when he thought about giving it to you, he didn't say, uh, you better start listening to me for them to get it. He had, out of his heart, he had already said, I want to give it to you. But what happened is he created laws because he knows that if he gives it to you, and you're not in the right place. Guess what's going to take place? You're going to mishandle it. And it's going to. It, it's not going to have the purpose of why he sent it. Because when God gives you a car. He don't want you to have no cigarette smokers in your car. He don't want your car smelling like smoke. You see what I'm saying? When he gives you a house. He don't want you to be inviting over your neighbors. Tell them Yeah come on and just chill out with us. So, so he put you through that process of sowing because sowing trains your soul so that when you get the multiplication that you'll be submissive to the instructions that go with it. See, Abram, look what God did first. Gave him instructions, 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 instructions. Then look what he gave him rare riches. When Solomon started sowing that big thousand bird offering, he already let God know, I'm trained. So God said, let me give you all these things. Solomon had already made up in his mind, I want to follow your system. So God said, okay, you follow my system let me show you what my system produces. Think about this. Solomon had made up in his mind, Lord, I want to follow your laws. So, so God said, I'm about to break the laws for you. And that's a shocker. That's a real shocker. Saints, why did God tell David, I will give you whatever you wanted? Because Solomon is a sower. Solomon is a sower. Solomon is a soul. Oh, no, he told David that. He told, he, God told David, saying, wow, he said, if you would have asked me for your, what, your neighbor's wife? David said, no, I don't want it. No, I'm all good. Bathsheba over there taking a bath. That's all I need right there. Bathsheba taking a bath. You notice Bathsheba got called while she was taking a shower. Because guess what? Now I want you to catch this. 
When you are a clean woman, you attract God. And I'm talking spiritually. I ain't even talking physical. When you're a clean woman, meaning that you choose to cleanse yourself with the word, you're attracting God to you. When you choose to submit yourself, when you're an obedient woman, you're attracting God to yourself. Because you're doing what Bathsheba did. Saints, I want you to catch this. Bathsheba is taking a bath, meaning that she loves water. In a spiritual sense, here's what I want you to see. She loves water. She loves the word. She loves being clean. She loves being blameless. Now, why she had titties out and stuff like that, we don't know. We don't know why she had titties out like that. Maybe, maybe she was feeling, maybe she felt Mardi Gras that day. Maybe she felt Mardi Gras. We don't know why she had titties out like that. If she had titties out like that, that's, that's, that's something else. That's something else. Why she ain't had no blinds on it. We don't know why she had no blind. Why she ain't had no blinds on it. Why it was, the titties was just out. Like that. We don't know why she had tears out like that. What she was trying to do. She knew what she was doing. She knew David was up there. She knew David was up there. She was up there naked on purpose. She up there naked. She was doing all that stuff. She knew what, what she was trying to do. She knew what she was trying to do in the first place. But she knew David was up there now. She knew David was up there. Everybody knew David was up there. And she knew David, 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 David was watching. She she knew some things. So she 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 was just, she had she had that saxophone music. She knew what she was doing. She had on the Bluetooth. She had a Bluetooth phone. She had she had Jerusalem Bluetooth. She knew what she was doing then. Wee 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 wee. <laughs> Jay Z come out. Jay Z come out of nowhere. Jay Z come out of nowhere. Wee 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 wee. Jay Z come out. Show me what you got, little mama. Then what? Ho! Now say I don't even. Never mind. I don't want to talk too much. But so, since you ever, you see in the 90s, I was trying to mind my business and that song kept coming on. Big pin pin, spinning the cheese. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, come on, man. Come on, man. I'm tired of this song. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't keep on hearing this, man. Make me go crazy. Make me angry. I was getting angry, man. I didn't know why that song was number one. What was up with that song? I think it, it must have been the woman that was in the video. It probably was a woman there. Okay, it made no sense every man. Be pin pin spinning the shit. And, and then I didn't know what Jay-Z was like. He was a den of the day of the day of the day of the day. I didn't know. Hey, what was going on? All I saw was some lips moving. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. And say that's how I went. Big pin, pin, spinning the cheese. And, and and the hat was too small on one of it. Like bing the bing to the bend the bun to the bend the bun to the Big pin pin. I'm like, come on man. I'm tired of this, man. Somebody turn it off. Stop. Since we all had them songs in our generation that kept on playing, you ain't know why I was number one. Like, who paid for this song to be number one? Because this says you try to watch 106 in part because you want to feel a little sinful. You want to do a little sin. And, and while, while you're trying to be sinful, all of a sudden, they're up there playing big pin pins. Like, who, who voted this song number one? Where's Joe Biden? This was the beginning of Joe Biden. It was the beginning. It was the beginning. It was the beginning. Says when we was watching 106 in Park and was watching MTV... They always had the slowest song number one. That was the beginning of bot votes. You like who voted this song in? So saints, when you sow a seed, here's what's happening. You're actually giving God the power to take you to the next level of grace. Oh, this is a glorious time for your life. You're giving him the power to take you to the next level of grace. And the grace is limitless, so it keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. There's no limitation to the grace. Think about that. You think that you get to a certain grace and you think that that's the highest level of money, the highest level of provision. God take you higher than that. But you got to show him that you're trained. See, see, saints, the thing about it, how did I step into the soul anointing, being trained? 
Your soul don't automatically want to sow. Your soul is constantly trying to look out for itself. Your soul will cling to the flesh and react to money according to the flesh. That's the spirit of mammon. For you to operate in the spirit of honor, you got to be trained because your soul automatically wants to go in the direction of, I got to make sure that I'm fine. But see, when you in honor, you say, I want to make sure God fine. See, you start talking telepathically to the spirit of God with what you have. And that's, that's, that's the glorious thing. Saints, God didn't ask Solomon for a seed. Solomon found that seed. How? He was seeking God. His, his heart was in creativity of how, what could I sow? God never told Solomon to sow that seed. So, so how did he sow that seed? Because he had creatively said, Lord, what could I sow unto you? See, and look what God gave him. The body of Christ, a little, 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 they, they're a little slow because God has these scriptures in the Bible to show you. If you creatively want to sow bountifully into me, this is the life I'm going to give you. Saint Solomon then asked God to give him riches. God volunteered riches to Solomon because he had a sowing heart. If God did that for Solomon and he the same yesterday and today and forever. Money coming to me now. If he did that for Solomon and Solomon didn't ask God for money. You know all Solomon did? Lord, I just want to please you with this seed and I receive wisdom and understanding. Look at that. Spiritual, telepathic, mental. Honor is a telepathic anointing to know how to sow, what to sow, when to sow. Honor and where to sow as well. Because remember, the disciples was trying to get that seed to go into the poor. And Jesus said, the poor you have with your ways. That woman had telepathically linked up and knew that that alabaster box was supposed to be sown into her prophet. It was supposed to be sown into her, her apostle. It was supposed to be sown into her king. She had knew that via telepathic communication. The anointing of honor and the angels of honor will come inside of your life and help you. To not miss the moments of honor. And, and angels of honor will actually tell you what your man of God don't like. Angels of honor will tell you how to treat your man of God, how to respond to him, how to do stuff. Angels of honor. You get offended. You get mad. You don't got angels of honor in your life. Because angels of honor, they train you how to submit to authority. Angels of honor, they train you. How to cater to what your man of God wants. You here on earth to learn what is the righteousness of God for my life. Not for anybody else's life. What is the righteousness of God for my life? And what does God want long for from me? And what God be longing for? The angels of honor are going to teach you how to do it.